Hi, so for today, we're going to talk about the integration of trigonometric functions. Uh, I have already a video about uh, examples solving uh, involving trigonometric functions, the integral of trigonometric functions. But in this video, we're going to focus more on the integration of the trigonometric functions. And for a review of our trigonometric functions, the integrals of our tri trigonometric functions, we have this following formulas. This is quite uh, many, but it's the same as uh, uh, the differentiation formulas. It so happened that this is the opposite of differentiation, the integration. So for the integral of sine x ds, we have negative cosine of x plus c. Again, we have for the integral of cosine x dx, we have equal, that is equal to sine of x plus c. The integral of cotangent x is simply equal to the natural logarithm of the absolute value of sine x plus c. And for the integral of cosecant x, cosecant dx dx is equal to the natural logarithm of the absolute value of cosecant x minus cotangent x plus c. And the integral of cosecant squared x is simply negative cotangent x plus c. And so on and so forth. Okay, So this may be so many uh, formulas right here, but... You have to familiarize yourself at least with these integrals because uh, when you are actually uh, uh, dealing with trigonometric functions, so you should memorize this. And also, you will be recalling some of the trigonometric identities because before we even solve the integral, we should at least simplify first the integrand uh, if it has uh, trigonometric identities. Okay? So, let's get started. Let's try a very simple problem first. Okay? So, for our number 1, find the integral of 3ex okay, plus 5 cos sine of x minus 10 second squared of x dx. Okay? So, pretty much uh, easy. This, this, this example is really easy. First, we need to distribute the uh, integral sine dx plus 5 integral of cosine of x dx okay i can always uh, put the constant outside of the integral sine or integral symbol okay so this is very helpful why right? because for you not to be confused okay so the integral of e raised to x is simply e raised to x okay the integral of cosine is simply 5 a sine of x, correct? Minus 10, the integral of second squared x is simply tangent of x. Of course, don't forget the plus constant, the integration of, uh, constant of integration, okay? So that's number one. Pretty easy. For number two, we have integral of 2 second of w tangent of w plus 1 over 6 w dw okay so we have here again we need to distribute the integration sign to second w tangent w okay dw plus 1 integral of 1 over 6 w dw so we can factor out the two outside of the integral sign such that we have second w tangent W, DW, okay, or D omega, I don't know. So, plus 1 over 6, the integral of DW over W, okay? So that if you're going to evaluate the integral of second W tangent W, that is equivalent to second W, plus 1 over 6, the integral of DW over W is simply ln of the absolute value of W plus, okay, C. Okay, so this should be our answer for this integral. Let's try again another problem. So for number 3, we have integral of 23y over y squared plus 1 plus 6 cos second y cotangent y okay, plus 9 over y. Okay, dy. So, they are all in dy. So, what will happen here? First, 
we have to distribute again the integral symbol and the dy plus 6 I factored out the constant cosecant y cotangent y dy plus 9 over y is simply 9 integral of dy over y. We can factor out 9 outside of the integral. Okay, and also this we can factor out uh, 23. So we are left with y here. We have 23 here. Okay, so how do we integrate this? So we are going to let u as y squared plus 1. du with respect to y is 2y. Then du is now equal to 2y dy. As you can see here, we have y dy here. So we need to offset 2 here. So outside of the integral, we need to offset 1 half, which it will become 23 over 2. Plus, okay, the integral of this is simply cosecant of y cotangent y dy from our integration formulas, the integral of this is simply negative cosecant or cosecant. And this is ln of y. So what will happen again? So 23 over 2 integral of du over u because du is 2y dy and u is our y squared plus 1 plus again 6 integral of cosecant y cotangent y dy plus 9 integral of dy over y. Okay. So what will happen? We have 23 over 2 ln of the absolute value of u plus, okay, this would become minus because integral of cosecant y cotangent y will be a negative 1. So negative cosecant. So negative 6 cosecant y plus 9 ln of the absolute value of y plus c. Of course, we need to uh, substitute back the value of u so that u is equal to what y squared plus 1 minus 6 cosecant y plus 9 ln of the absolute value of y plus c. So this should be our final answer for this problem of Integral. So as you can see, our problem involves also some polynomials, some u substitution. So this is not purely a trig, but it involves trigonometric functions. Okay. So number four. <coughs> number four is find the integral of seven minus six sine squared theta over sine squared theta d theta. Okay. So, uh, what are we going to do here? Simple algebra, one property of integral is that we can, if we have a product or, or a uh, subtraction or addition inside the integral, we can always separate them so that we have 7 over sine squared theta minus integral of 6 sine squared theta over sine squared theta t theta. Okay, this is also a, this also a t theta. So what what will happen is we can factor out seven, so that t theta over sine squared theta, factor out six. We can factor out that sine squared theta over sine squared theta t theta. So as you can see, these two would cancel. Okay, and how do we integrate this? Okay. 1 over sine, according to our identity, is equal to cosecant, cosecant theta. Since this is squared, we can actually replace this as 7, the integral of cosecant squared theta, okay, t theta minus, oops, minus 6 integral of d theta, okay? So, the integral of cosecant theta is actually what? Cotangent. 7, okay, cotangent theta. I'm sorry, this should be negative cotangent because the integral of cosecant squared theta is the negative cotangent so that I have a negative here in my 7, in my constant. So, oh, negative 7 cotangent theta minus 6 theta, okay, plus C. So this should be our answer 
for this problem of our integral. So let's try another number or problem. So for problem number 5, okay, integral of 4x cubed minus uh, 9 plus 2 sine of x, okay, 2 sine of x plus 7e raised to x uh, dx. So again, we can distribute the integral sign or symbol so that we have, I will be factoring out some of the constants for integral of x cubed dx minus 9 integral of dx plus 2 integral of sine of x dx plus 7 integral of e raised to x dx. Okay? So if we integrate this for x raised to 4 over 4 power formula, this should cancel. Minus integral of dx in simply 9x plus the integral of plus 2 the integral of sine of x is of course negative cosine x plus 7 integral of e raised to x is simply e raised to x plus c. So simplifying our answer, we have x raised to 4 minus 9x minus 2 cosine of x, okay, plus 7e raised to x plus c. So that should be our answer. Okay? So, let's try another one. Okay? The only way for you to be able to become a great uh, student when it comes to solving mathematics is to practice as much problem as you can. To solve problems, many problems. So, we have integral of sine x okay, <clears throat> plus 10 cosecant squared x uh, dx. Okay, as usual, this is a very straightforward okay, integral so that we can what distribute the integral sine, sine of x dx plus, I'm going to factor out 10 because it's constant outside of the integral symbol, cosecant squared x the dx. So simply, integral of sine is again negative cosine of x plus 10. Integral of cosecant squared x is negative cotangent of x plus, okay, oops, let me just rewrite this neatly negative cotangent of x, okay, the dx. So our answer would be negative cosine of x minus 10 cotangent of x plus, don't forget the plus c, plus c. Okay? So this should be our answer for number 6. So let's continue for number 7. Okay? Find the integral of 12 plus uh, cosecant theta multiplied by sine theta plus cosecant theta t theta. Okay? Again, first we can uh, distribute cosecant theta here in our uh, expression here. So we have 12 plus sine theta cosecant theta plus cosecant theta or squared theta t theta. Okay? So again, distribute the integral sign and factor out the constants. So we have this following equations. So cosecant squared theta t theta. So how do we find <coughs> this? Okay. So let's use identity. 12 theta, no problem with this. But don't you know, class? That cosecant theta by reciprocal identity, this cosecant theta can be written as 1 over sine theta. Okay, that's the reciprocal identity. And the integral of cosecant squared theta is again what? Again, the negative cotangent theta. Okay, plus C. So that if we have here 
sin theta divided by sin theta, theta that is simply t theta that is simply 1 so the integral of t theta is simply theta okay minus cotangent theta plus c so 12 theta plus theta is 13 theta minus cotangent theta plus c so this should be our answer for this example okay so let's try again another number so we have number eight okay we have the integral of the cosine cube of v okay plus a sine of v over okay over cosine squared of v dv <clears throat> okay so this could be a tricky one but how do we solve this from what i can see is to uh, solve it independently so we have integral cosine cube of v over cosine squared of v dv plus sine of v over cosine squared of v dv so we know that this would be cancelled so that you are left with simply integral of cosine of v dv and you can easily integrate this and but for this okay it this can be written as sine of v over cosine of v multiplied by 1 over cosine of v dv okay and again sine of uh, v over cosine of v by trigonometric identities that is equivalent to sine over cosine is equivalent to tangent of v but 1 over cosine 1 over cosine is also equivalent to second of v dv so that we have reduced this integral into a readily integrable uh, integral so we know that the integral of cosine v is simply sine of v okay and this is sec v tan v integral of sec v tan v second v tangent v so this is readily integrable because the integral of this is simply second of v plus of course c the constant of integration okay don't you ever forget the constant of integration <clears throat> okay so let's try again number nine for number nine we have to find the integral of one minus one over w okay cosine of w minus ln w dw okay <laughs> so this may look like a strange uh, integral okay but if you are going to analyze uh, this part of the integral has something in relation with this because technically if if this is the inside cosine function if we take the derivative of this this is the equivalent to this okay so in this problem we have to let u as equal to w minus ln of w okay because we cannot use any identities here okay so because we have we have only one uh trig function here and it does not seem to have any relationship with the other inside of the integral so we have to let this might be a simple u substitution so we have du with respect to w is simply 1 minus the ln of w the derivative of ln is the derivative of this inside function over the original function so that that is 1 over w so du is simply equal to 1 minus 1 over w dw which is available here in our integral so this is a simple u substitution so that we have cosine of w minus ln w we let that as u okay multiplied by simply du because we have 1 minus 1 over w dw okay and this is available so we can simply integrate this so the integral of cosine is simply sine u plus c but technically 
u is equal to w minus ln of w plus c. So hence, this should be our answer for our problem number 9. As you can see here, uh, there is a great relationship okay, between the inside function of cosine, of, uh, cosine and this uh, term here. So if you have already uh, uh, mastered the u substitution, it would be really easy for you to spot those patterns. Okay? So that's the problem in, with integral. You are given with an integral. There are many ways, techniques actually to solve that. And for that proper integral, you may arrive, you must arrive at the proper technique to be used. Okay? So for number 10, <coughs> For number 10, we have the integral of sine 1 minus x okay, to minus cos sine 1 minus x raised to 4 dx. <coughs> okay, raised to 4 dx. Okay. As you can see here, this should be a, an odd I mean, uh, very, very, it may look like a hard problem for us. But technically, we have two in, in uh, two, uh, two identities, strict identities. We have the sine and cosine. Okay? So, let's try as much as possible before we go on, on transposing this into some trigonometric identities. Okay? Let's try to use the always the u substitution. Okay? Let's try. Let's, let's always try. Because this is a sine and cosine Function. So there is a great relationship between them because the derivative of sine is cosine and the derivative of cosine is negative sine. So u substitution may be, can be used in this type of problem. Let's try. So if we're going to let u as 2 minus cosine of 1 minus x, okay? If we're going to get the derivative of u with respect to x, this would be 0. Derivative of cosine itself is negative sine. Distributed by negative sine, that should be a positive. Okay? Sine 1 minus x. And actually, the derivative, the derivative of the inside function of the cosine 1 minus x is simply equal to negative 1. So that we have a du over dx that is equivalent to negative a sine 1 minus x. And we if we cross multiply this, we have du is equals to negative sine 1 minus x dx, which is sine 1 minus x is actually available here. Okay, dx is actually available in our integral. It so happened that in this integral, we must offset a value of a negative 1 because our d is negative sine 1, 1 of minus x dx. So we have to put negative sine here. Of course, negative sine in outside the integral. Because this is technically negative 1. So the reciprocal of negative 1 is still negative 1. So we can now perform the u substitution again. So the integral of, let's say, the integral of u, u our u is this, 2 minus cosine 1 minus x. That is raised to 4. So we have to raise it to 4 multiplied by, of course, the du. Okay, which is negative sine 1 minus x dx, which is this. Okay. So, we can easily integrate this by our formula. That's right. Plus c. And we need to back substitute the value of u in order for us to get the correct uh, answer. So, we have what is u? u is 2 minus cosine 1 minus x. Okay. And this should be raised to 5 over 5 plus the integration of, constant of integration, okay? So, this should be our answer. Well, of course, we forgot the negative, okay? So, this should have a negative here because we have offset a negative value outside of the integral symbol. Okay, for our next problem, let's try to solve again. The integral of cosine of 3j then uh, sine raised to 10 of 3j dj 
So this may look a little bit uh, uh, hard, but still the relationship between sine and cosine is that they are the uh, these two are the opposite difference uh, derivative of each other. So uh, sine. Let's just rewrite our integral as this. So sine of 3z raised to 10. That is equivalent to our first integral. Okay. So if we're going to let again a u a sine of 3z, okay, we need to get the derivative of u with respect to z, and that is first we need to derivative or differentiate the inside function that is 3. Differentiate the whole that is cos sine of 3 is z. So if I'm going to rearrange this equation, multiply this into this, so we have 3 cos sine of 3 is z dz. Okay? <laughs> so as you can see here, we have cosine of 3z dz, which is available in our integrand, but we have a 3 here, so we will be uh, having a correction factor of 3 inside the integral. So we have now what? Uh, if we have a correction factor of 3 here, okay, in order for us to perform u substitution, well, then again, I'm, we are going to have a correction factor that is at the reciprocal of what we uh, uh, included inside of the integral sign or symbol. So that is one third. So, so that we can now perform our integration, so that we have one third the integral of the u. Okay, what is the u? Sine 3z. So u, that is raised to 10, multiplied by simply du, and we have the answer. By power formula, u raised to 11 over 11 plus c. So in the denominator, we have 1 over 33, u raised to 11, which our u is sine 3z. Okay, sine 3z raised to 11 plus c. So this should be our final answer. So for number 12, let's try again another integral integral so we have second squared of 40 okay times the 3 minus the tangent of 40 this is raised to cube a dt again so we have two trigonometric functions and we can at least uh, use again the our u substitution okay so if we're going to let u we know that this if we take this as u, 3 minus tangent 40, okay, we know that the derivative of tangent is second squared 40. So we have du over dt, that is 0, okay, the derivative of tangent 40, okay, is again, we first get the derivative of the inside function that is equivalent to 4, okay, and then we get the derivative of the tangent that is second, okay, squared for t. That is negative okay, because we have a minus sign here. Okay, So we have du is equals to negative 4 secant squared or second squared 40 dt. <coughs> now the problem is we have second squared 40 dt okay, available here. So we, we're going to offset again a value of, let me just change my uh, marker here. Okay, So we have negative 4 so we need to insert negative 4 okay negative 4 here as our correction factor and outside of the integral negative 1 fourth the reciprocal of our what we had added so we have second squared 40 okay 3 minus tangent 40 raised to 3 dt and we can now perform the u substitution we have negative 1 fourth the integral of u, what is our u? 3 minus tangent 40, that is raised to 3. u cube times du, because this is negative 4 seconds squared 40, dt is simply equal to our d. So, power formula. So, we have u raised to 4 over 4, okay, plus c. So, we have negative 1 over 16, okay, times du, what is our u? 3 minus tangent of 40 raised to 4 plus c. So this should be our final answer for this example. 
Down to our second to the last example, we have number 13. Find the integral of 4 times 1 over z minus e raised to negative z. Okay? Cosine of e raised to negative z plus ln of z dz. Okay? So you can see here we have only one trigonometric function. And it's more likely to be u substitution again. So, again, if we take note of the inside function of the cosine e raised to negative z plus l and z, if we take the derivative of this, okay, the derivative of this is negative e raised to negative z, which is this, okay, and the ln of z is 1 over z, which is this. So, we can let u as the e raised to negative z plus ln of z. If we get the derivative of u with respect to z, that is negative e raised to negative z, okay, plus 1 over z, which happens to be this. So if we're going to rearrange this, so 1 over z minus e raised to negative z, which is actually this. So cross-multiplying, we have 1 over z minus e raised to negative z, dz. And viola, we can use the u substitution. So what will we do? So again, we can factor out 4 since this is a constant. So we have cosine of, again, u, which is this, multiplied by du, okay? So, our answer should be integral of cosine of u is simply sine of u plus c. Back substitution, we have 4 sine of u, what is our u? e raised to negative z plus ln of z plus c. So, this should be our answer for this number. So, okay, I hope you learned something. That's all for this video. Thank you so much and God bless you.